Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. And we have some breaking news for everybody that just hit our newsroom. It's snowing outside. <laughs> yes, in case you haven't seen, looked outside your window yet, there is snow and lots of it. But thankfully, we are joined by two very special people that will help break down everything we're going to be seeing over the next couple days. It is Storm Team 8 meteorologist Sarah Flynn and Blake Harms. And they're here, as I said, to break everything down. So first of all, I want to thank you both for coming in. I know you guys are going to be busy over the next <laughs> couple of days. Yeah, it's been a busy week, I would yeah, say. Yeah, just a little bit. Blake's getting really thrown into it. You know, because <laughs> yeah, it's oh, his first gosh, week, yeah, and yeah. we'll have some good stuff tonight, too. Yeah. No, right, absolutely. <laughs> and before we do get started, I would like to let everybody know on Facebook that if you're watching and you have questions for Blake or Sarah, please just leave them down in the comment section. We'll try to get to as many as we can. And also, if you're watching us on Facebook, be sure to click on that link in the description box. It will take you directly to our website, woodtv.com. And there you can find all of the information you need regarding the next couple of days and including coming up with the Thanksgiving travel schedule. So before we get started, Sarah, I'm understanding that you have a lot to cover specifically with those winter weather uh, warning graphics. Yeah, the good news is we don't have a ton of change from yesterday. So if you tuned in last night or you've been paying attention, this is still what we're dealing with. We have that winter storm warning for a bulk of our area, still seeing those highest snow totals closest to the lake shore. But as you probably learned today, that snow slowly moves inland. And that's the pink area. The surrounding area in that purple is that winter weather advisory. And really just that means that you're gonna likely see uh, less impacts a little bit less snow totals but no matter where you are it could be a little bit of a challenging evening commute yeah uh if we want to go to storm check live we can actually and what i was just pointing out to sarah right before this started was uh, the coverage and intensity starting to pick up a little bit so what we're having yeah, is a little yeah, disturbance moving across the lake and colder air is now starting to pour in and that's why we're seeing um if we actually put that on are you able to put that in a loop I can, yeah. Uh, you can probably see it pick up in intensity. Sorry about that. No, you're good. It's, it's really, <laughs> the, the point we're trying to make is that, um, you know, for a lot of folks who maybe haven't seen a lot of uh, snow travel impacts yet, where uh, the pavement's still wet, not a lot of accumulation, that's going to be changing. Uh, and actually, if you look at the lake, you can kind of see that starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, those darker shades of blue starting to pop up. And you can kind of tell the wave is swiveling through the Great Lakes, and that's what's going to be flaring up that lake effect. And unfortunately, it's coming just in time for the evening uh, commute. And not only that, but we have, uh, once the once sun goes down, temperature is falling at the 20s, we're going to have the snow start to accumulate on the pavement. And all that moisture that's left over on the roadways is going to start to freeze, any untreated roads anyway. So, again, we've already gotten some, some viewer questions about, you know, well, we're not seeing any major travel impacts yet. Well, just wait, because it's, it's coming. There's a reason why we're under this winter storm warning. And this is a 72-hour event, and we're only right. a few hours now. Right, I think it, it, that's a little bit of a learning curve. A lot of people are asking, well, it's not too bad out there. And we have seen the last couple of days, and even this morning, the snow is melting on impact pretty much immediately. Our road temperatures yesterday when I left were still in those mid-30s, so warm enough that it's not necessarily going to stick. And it's a bit of a wetter snow. So, again, as we see those snow tools pick up, the temperatures near or dropping below freezing tonight, uh, it's going to get a little bit dicey out there. I know Blake has got just about every third grader <laughs> I know. or older in this entire state asking about snow days. Yeah, and well, and you think about it, I mean, we're still uh, 14 hours before a lot of schools see what even have to make a decision. Right. So uh, the conditions are starting to go downhill already. It, the morning commute was pretty messy, uh, even yeah. with just a brief burst of snow. And that was because we had the cooler temperatures and, you know, it wasn't quite light out yet. And so, again, once that, once the sun goes down, I think we'll start to see those impacts ramp up pretty quickly. Yeah, and you mentioned we've already seen some good snow totals. I think yes. there's a graphic here too. Uh, send us your snow reports if you're watching, by Please. the way. <laughs> Typically what you do is you go outside with a ruler or measurement uh, and do it in several different locations on a flat and hard surface. So that could be a sidewalk, a driveway, uh, your porch, whatever. Uh, we haven't had a ton of snow reports just yet, but here's kind of our radar estimates so far. Uh, we'll start in the south. So uh, Paw Paw, uh, or just south of Paw Paw, around four inches. Hartford coming in around five, I believe. South Haven, we kind of had a patch there that picked up some of those heavier snow Total. So uh, eight or more inches. A uh, little bit further to the north. Here we go. There it goes. Uh, towards the Grand Rapids area, we did get an official report in East Grand Rapids, just over three inches. Right around three inches is one o'clock. Okay. So. I know a little bit further down to the south in Cascade. Uh, I measured before I left, which was like two hours ago, and it was in about 2.6 around there, but probably well over three right now. Uh, again, towards the lake, about five inches in Grand Haven, Port Shelton, almost five and a half inches. Um, and then up to the north, kind of missing out on some of those heavier snow totals, but still significant, about 3.4 in Cedar Springs, uh, 
Fremont's around 4.2, Big Prairie 4.2. So again, these are estimates. So go outside and measure. Let us know. We'd love to include your snow reports uh, in our evening newscast tonight. And I, I'm not trying to be rude, Sarah. I'm reading on my phone as, you, as you're talking because the weather service just came out with it. They do a forecast discussion twice a day, yeah. and they just came out with it. And basically, they're saying the same thing. Forecast is still on track. Uh, those, those roads are going to be icing up overnight tonight. And for all intents and purposes, I think everything's going according to, to plan for now. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And is there any sort of fear for later on in the week as far as travel goes? You know, you're saying that uh, we're going to be seeing it really impact as we go further along during the weekend. I would say... Probably the worst commute we're going to have is Friday morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think Sarah would probably agree with that. Agree, yeah. And then travel gets worse again Saturday night to Sunday. Uh, yeah. So we may see a lot of church cancellations on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not necessarily that conditions are going to be good for those other commutes, but I think the, the main focus is really the heaviest snow is going to take place tonight to tomorrow, and then again from Saturday night to Sunday. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of confusing at this system, too, because a lot of our alerts expire at 7 a.m. Saturday, right. but it's probably still going to be snowing. So that's we'll get another confusing. sort of advisory. <laughs> yeah, or something, something like that. And so it'll finally, I think, taper off really early Sunday, and then it should be dry. Um, and I know this is way far in advance, but if you're already kind of thinking about next week getting a little bit nervous, I know I did the same thing for Thanksgiving travel. It's going to be in the clear. We're actually going to see a pretty significant warm-up here, so not too much to worry about here. We really just have to get through the next uh, three or so days here. Yeah, we are seeing, we are seeing a couple of comments and questions right now fearful as you said about the thanksgiving travel but i mean we're going to be covering that a lot more in depth next week here on the live desk we've got that coming up as well as the big story today coming at 6 p.m tonight is the winter outlook special uh, we're going to be paying close attention to that and we're actually going to be doing a talk back on the live desk here as well tomorrow at 1 p.m uh, but i do want to showcase some of these photos these are photos that were sent in to us earlier today of just all the snow that you see here I mean, this is just incredible already, uh, and we're only going to be expecting to see more and more. We also have a comment from Adam who says that he has seen six and a half inches already uh, on his picnic table at Deer Camp in Irons, Michigan. So definitely going to be asking more and more people to keep sending in those yeah. photos and, you know, all those measurements as we see. And we're going to be keeping a close eye on that yeah. up. Yeah, Blake, I just ahead. want to touch on those pictures because you saw that one of the birdhouse all the snow on top. That's an interesting um, point to make is that right now the snow is really wet and heavy, so it's sticking to everything. That's why we're seeing the snow on the tree branches, on the road signs, just about everywhere it can stick, it is doing so. As the colder air continues to move in, we're going to see that snow start to turn a little more powdery, and that's when the travel impacts will start to get worse as well because then you have to worry about blowing snow. It's going to accumulate a little, a little easier. And so we're seeing the pretty scenes out here for now, and we still will, but uh, the snow is going to get a lot less sticky, I think, over the next few hours mm -hmm. into the overnight. Right, for absolutely. Sure. And uh, before you guys go, I do want to ask a question. I'm not familiar with the, this winter storm <laughs> at all. Snow, totally not my thing coming from Alabama here. <laughs> do you have any tips for somebody who, you know, may not have, be used to this or maybe has never even seen snow before? How would you kind of deal with that as far as travel goes, staying warm and just honestly being prepared all together? I said to Blake earlier, uh, I lived in Iowa, and it was different. It was windy, and it was cold. So I'm going to give this one to Blake for <laughs> Michigan winter. It's a little bit different. Yeah. What's your tip? Well, <laughs> my thing is that the thing that makes me most nervous is this is the first significant snow event of the year, and this is when we see uh, a significant amount of crashes and incidents from involving that nature. So just remember to take it slow and, and, and make sure to keep your head in a swivel. Uh, keep in mind what's going on around you. Uh, we already saw a, a good number of crashes this morning, more than we would see if we got this much snow, you know, in February when people are used to it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, give a little grace on the roadways, too. A lot of people are still adjusting back to driving in the mm -hmm. ice and snow. Um, and give yourself plenty of extra time because the last thing you want to be doing is rushing to where you need to go over the next few days. Right, absolutely. Well, I want to thank both Blake and Sarah for joining us today on the Wood TV Live Desk. You guys provided a lot of great information. And again, uh, I encourage everybody to head on over to our website, woodtv.com. There you can find all of the information you're going to be looking for over the next couple of days, including as we get set closer to Thanksgiving Day travel. So both of you, I know you guys are going to be busy over the next couple of days, so we'll let you guys go. And I do want to thank everybody for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.